Hi, and welcome to the final video in our series on getting started with the Python client library for the Google Ads API. If you've made it this far, you already know that I'm Ben Carl, a developer relations engineer on the API and the lead maintainer of the Python client library. Up to this point, we've generated the credentials necessary to authenticate to the API. We created a small Python application and installed the Python client library into it. And then we configured the application to ingest the credentials for the purposes of making requests. Now, the last step is to set up our script to make requests to the API. Let's get started. As a hello world with the API, we're going to incorporate the ad campaigns example from the Python client library into our simple Python project. You can find the source code for this example on GitHub, and I've included a link to it in the video description below. Keep in mind that the client library source code on GitHub contains a large number of other examples to help you develop other types of implementations. So please feel free to look around. Before we get going, I'm going to enter my project. I want to check the Git status, and I see that the changes from the last video are still present. I'm going to activate my virtual environment, and then Next, I'm going to open up our Python script. Uh, now, real quick, before we make any changes, there's two things that I want to get out of the way that aren't really important for what I'm trying to show, but will help make this script run. So the first thing is I want to add a few lines to read my customer ID from my test account from my developer environment. Okay, so this is different from using environment variables for configuration. You will need to pass your customer ID whenever you call a service method, and this approach lets me use my real test account without showing its ID to the camera. I'm still using the YAML file from the previous video for configuration, which is loaded automatically when I call the load from storage method here on line six. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is add a few um, imports for some standard library modules that I need. Uh, date, time, sys, and uh, UUID. I'm going to import the Google Ads exception class, um, which I'm going to need for error handling. And I am going to declare this date format variable, which is used to set the start and end dates for the campaign later. Um, I would not say any of these things are particularly important right now. You can find all the stuff in the example in GitHub. I'm just adding it right now so the example will actually run later. Okay, now looking what we already have, we here are calling the load from storage method to initialize the Google Ads client. Keep in mind that the load from storage method will by default look for a file named google-ads.yaml in the home directory of your machine, but you can also optionally pass it a file path that points to a differently named file in any location on your machine. So the next thing I'll do, I'm going to start moving portions of the ad campaigns example to this file. Rather than pasting the whole thing in at once, I'm going to move over small portions one at a time so that I can talk through each section in detail. Once I have an initialized client instance, I can obtain service instances with the get service method. This example creates a campaign budget and a campaign, so I'll go and grab the campaign budget service and the campaign service, just like that. Now, before I can create a campaign, I need to create a campaign budget. These steps will retrieve a campaign budget operation object there on line 17 and configure it to create a campaign budget with the other settings that I want. Know that these specific settings are just for example. You should check the documentation to have a clear idea of how to configure your own campaign budgets. Okay, once the operation is ready, I make a call to the mutate campaign budgets method, passing my client customer ID and a list of operations. In this case, the list has only one operation in it. If successful, this will save a reference to the response so we can retrieve information from it later. Here on line 31, um, we're catching any Google Ads exception that might be returned from the API response and passing it to a function that will print the details of the error. 
All of our examples demonstrate how to handle exceptions from the API, so I'm not going to go into, into detail on that here. Now the next step should look familiar. I retrieve a campaign operation and configure it with the settings I want for my new campaign. Here I'm giving the campaign a generic name and making it a standard search campaign. I start by giving it a status of paused so that I can activate it later once I'm ready. Then I set other configurations such as the network settings, campaign bidding strategy, and start and end dates. One thing to point out here on line 42 is that I set the campaign budget field with the resource name of the campaign budget I created in the previous request. You can see here that I'm pulling that value directly from the response object. Lastly, I'll make a call to the mutate campaigns method right here. Again, passing my customer ID and a list of operations. And in the same way as before, we're catching any exceptions that might be returned and printing the details to our logs. Now, when we run the script, hopefully we should not see any errors and we should see that a campaign was created. So let's give that a shot. Might take a moment. Yep, and there we go. There's the campaign budget. And there's the campaign. And at the bottom, you can see Hello World was printed, which means that our script completed successfully. And there we have it. Now we have a brand new campaign budget and a campaign in our account. Thank you very much for following along with this video series. If you have any questions or issues using the Python client library, please submit an issue on the GitHub page, and we'll res respond as soon as we can to help you out.